show. Yes, sir. He is Alpha and Omega, Bishop Joseph Walker. Good morning. I know you got a good word for us today. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, everybody. I pray everybody's having a wonderful day. It's going to be an amazing week. He is Alpha and he is Omega. And, you know, it really suggests that God knows our end from our beginning. And I think it's so important for us, no matter where we are, in the process of moving toward what God promised us, to learn the power of waiting on God. Sometimes when you don't wait on God, you insert yourself into the situation, and you oftentimes get ahead of God. But let me tell you, the Bible says in Psalm 27 and 14, Wait, I say on the Lord, and he will give you courage, and he'll strengthen your heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. And I think it's important to think about this. Stop whining and worrying, because that ain't going to do nothing but run your blood pressure up. You've got to trust God. You've been walking with God long enough to know he may not come when you want him to, but he's always on time. Here's the second thing I want you to remember, that he is working while you're waiting, that God is making moves on your behalf. He's going before you, rearranging things, moving people out the way before you get on that job. God is taking care of things before you even get there. He's not standing by idle. He's at work while you're waiting. But here's the blessing. you got to know something. The wait is going to be worth it. There are a lot of people, Ricky, that live their lives like microwaves. They give even cook their food by the microwave. They want it right now, right now. But if you know anything about real good food, Grandma would always put that stuff in the crock pot. And the crock pot ministry is where the real stuff happens. That's when all the seasons and everything works together. And it's got to sit a while, and you got to wait on it. But boy, when you take the top off, that's the best food ever. And that's what God does sometimes. He'll put you in the crock pot. And he'll say, just sit there a while, because I'm making all of it work together for your good. And when I take the top off and release you, it's going to be so much better. I just want to encourage somebody to know it's going to happen for you. Don't get ahead of God. No, he knows your end from your beginning. Oh, man, that's a good word. Bishop Joseph Walker, the senior pastor of Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, Nashville, Tennessee. Bishop, uh, let everybody know how you could be reached. Hey, I want everybody, let everybody know right how you could be reached. Yeah, I want everybody right now to follow me on Instagram at Joseph Walker 3. That's Joseph Walker, the number three. And let me know you were listening to the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. All right, Bishop, don't hang up. I got one for you. I'm going to take you back to back when our grandmamas was living right here. I got this. Oh, wow. Here you go. I, I bet you can't name it. Name this tune. You're not ready. You're not ready, Bishop. Here we go. News headlines. Entertainment. Sports. It's the front page on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. All right, jump 14 after the hour. Y'all got your front page right here. Maria, good morning. Good morning, Ricky. The front page is brought to you by Home Depot. Vote to give your HBCU a chance to win up to $150,000 in campus improvement grants now through March 24th. Only at retoolyourschool.com slash vote. Retool your school. We're powered by purpose. Good morning, RSMS family. Here's what's happening in news. Former President Donald Trump claimed that he, not President Biden, will protect Social Security and gave a controversial warning if he loses in November. Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole. That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. Okay. Later, Trump also claimed, yeah, if this election do a isn't damn won. Thing. Yeah. They ain't going to do a damn thing. Uh, you try to January the 6th with Joe Biden uh, running the National Guard. If you want to, you can bring. I wish they come to the Capitol steps or whatever. Yeah, you damn right. It'll be a bloodbath and it won't be nobody but them. With, with, Joe, yeah. with Joe Biden, we'll be in power. Uh, wh- whether he win or lose, you can pull your January the 6th on January the 6th if you want to mm-hmm. and see what happens. you damn right it'll be. It sure it will. It, 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 it'll be them magas. That's what it'll be. Yeah, it sounds like he's trying to use scare tactics to get people to vote for him. But, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens in November. In other news, Ricky, the city of Flint is in contempt for failing to comply with a court order that spelled out the steps to finish replacing old lead pipes following the Michigan City's lead contamination water scandal. This is so sad. It happened over 10 years ago. We're still talking about this. U.S. District Judge David Lawson wrote in Tuesday's decision that Flint did not meet the deadline of his original February 2023 order. 
Lastly, there was no winner for Friday night's Mega Millions jackpot drawing with a grand prize, ballooning to an estimated $875 million for Ooh. the next drawing, which is tomorrow. Friday night's cash had a value of $385.1 million, which will now increase after no winner was declared on Friday. Mm. I'm Maria Moore, and those are a few of today's headlines. For more news and updates, visit rickysmileymorningshow.com. Rock T, what's going on in sports? What's up, man? NCAA March Madness Selection Sunday went down yesterday. Everybody was tuned in. The top four number one seeds on the women's side is South Carolina, Iowa, USC, and Texas. Uh, shout out to my daughter Harmony and Harvard, man. They fell a little bit short. They lost to Columbia by two points in the Ivy Conference Tournament. But two Ivy teams did get into the tournament, Princeton and Columbia. Shout out to the two HBCUs that also made the tournament, Jackson State and Norfolk State University. And the men's side, the top four number one seeds is Houston, UConn, Purdue, and North Carolina. It's going down. Last but not least, big news in NFL dropped. One of the greatest, Aaron Donald. One of the best defensive players of this generation is hanging up the cleats and decided to retire after 10 years, all seasons with the L.A. Rams. So big ups and congratulations to uh, Aaron Donald, man. Going to move on to the next chapter of his life. It's my quick with sports report right there. Brad, got the hot spot coming up next. What you going to be talking about? Coming up next in the hot spot, the NAACP Image Awards went down, and I got the winners and all the details up next. It's the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Spot. Drop it like it's hot. hot. Drop it like it's hot. So hot and this hot. You can catch me at the hot spot. It's the B R A T. All right, twenty nine after the hour time for the hot spot. Brett, good morning. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, everybody. I'm your girl, Brett Tatad, and this is the hot spot where we bring you music, movies, and more. So let's get off into it. Kung Fu Panda 4 continued its box office success in its second weekend, earning $30 million and bringing its total to $176.5 million worldwide. Dune Part 2 was close behind in second place with another $29.1 million. Meanwhile, The Color Purple topped the 2024 NAACP Image Awards. The remake was named Best Motion Picture and took home three more awards during the televised awards show Saturday night. In total, The Color Purple took home 11 NAACP Image Awards. Danielle Brooks accepted Best Mo- Motion Picture Award as Best Actress winner. Fantasia Barino and Supporting Actress recipient Taraji P. Henson were part of the group joining her on stage. Danielle Brooks said on the red carpet, if nobody going to see us, I'm glad that our people see us, referencing the film's lack of Oscar Golden Globe and other nominations. Producer Oprah Winfrey was a surprise presenter for the NAACP Image Awards Top Prize of Entertainer of the Year, which went to Usher. It was the President's hey. Award. Yes, so congratulations to everybody that won there. Also, a new addition was inducted into the NAACP Image Awards Hall of Fame. And we'll be talking more about the awards show later in What's Trending. All right, y'all. Uh, last but not least, Dr. Dre revealed that he suffered three strokes following a brain aneurysm in 2021. Jeez. Uh, during his hospitalization, Dre shared that he initially woke up with discomfort behind his right ear, leading to severe pain. Urged by his son's friend, he sought medical help and was eventually admitted to the ICU at Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles. He said, I was there for two weeks. I'm hearing the doctors come in saying, you don't know how lucky you are. Despite maintaining a healthy lifestyle, Dr. Dre was unaware of his high blood pressure. High blood pressure in black men, that's just what it is. They call it the silent killer. You know you have no idea, so you know you have to keep getting your stuff checked, Dr. Dre said. And this is a true fact. It's not only a silent killer in men, it's a silent killer in women as well. Black people, get your blood pressure checked because hypertension is no joke and you will not know. You won't know. You'll just think you're just feeling a little dizzy or got a headache or something or you, uh, whatever. It is. Go get the check. I'm going to get very, mine checked today because I have been having some little dizzy spells. Listen, it's very important. And you won't know. You'll think everything fine because everything else in your body will check out fine. But that high blood pressure ain't no joke, especially like if it runs in your family, you know. So make sure y'all get your hypertension. Yep, yeah, make sure y'all get that checked out. Mm-hmm. All right, y'all, we're going to wrap up the hot spot on that note. But, oh, but coming up next, we got Rock T's joke of the day. <laughs> ah. What are we going to do, Rock T? How, how you feeling about the joke today? We're going to put a smile on everybody's face and make them laugh there, Brigitte Tat. I bet. <laughs> Let's do that. The time now is 28 minutes before the top of the hour. It's the Ricky Smiley Morning Show.
All right, y'all, Rick Smiley, the morning show. Hey, it is about that time for Rock T. Joe. Oh. Uh, the. Day. Let's go. Why do seagulls fly over the ocean? Why? Because if they flew over the bay, we'd call them bagels. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. Gary? <laughs> well, good morning, Gary. Good morning, Rick. The jury is still out. But anyway, Gary. Rick, guess what? what? Coming up, y'all, I got. <laughs> Gary. I'm going to be. I don't want to hear that, Miss Rock. We want to expand your damn vocabulary here. Nobody want to hear that. And Gary. I'm going to have the word of the week, y'all, next on the Rick's Bolly Morning Show. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you feel about that, Joe. That's Gary. how I feel about it today. Oh. Capital G, mm-hmm. capital A, mm-hmm. capital O, mm-hmm. capital T. B I C T H Job J O B. It's time for Gary's Word of the Week. And you know right, this, man. <laughs> it's time to expand our vocabulary with the Word of the Week now. Uh, to help increase our vocabulary in grammar, Gary uh, will select a word each week and give its definition, spelling, and an example of how to use it. And uh, then we're going to incorporate that baby into a sentence. All uh, right, Gary, good morning. Good morning, Rick. How you doing this beautiful Monday morning? Beautiful, beautiful. Yes. Well, Rick, our word this week, I mean, I love this word. I mean, I rarely use it, but it's a great word. The word for this week, y'all, is superfluous. Mm-mm. Superfluous. <laughs> superfluous. Oh, yes. superfluous. Yes, superfluous. Yes. There you go. And it's pronounced superfluous. And it's an adjective, Ricky Yai, and it is spelled S-U-P-E-R-F-L-U-O-U-S. Now, y'all, and the definition is to describe being more than enough, unnecessary, or too much. Now, here's an example how you use it in a sentence. My comedian co-workers seem to give, or uh, should I say seem to agree, that their daily wardrobe choices are often superfluous. You read the sentence wrong. <laughs> Jack that up. Whose wardrobe choices? You have the comedian co-workers. No, read the sentence <laughs> as it is written, Gary. The comedian co-workers of Gary with I can't say my name. Yes, you because can. Because I am Gary with You're speaking in third person. You're reading in third person. Oh. You're reading in third person. Oh, there well. you go. <laughs> the comedian co-workers of Gary with the T seem to agree that his daily wardrobe choices are often superfluous. <laughs> there you go. Now, that makes sense. Yeah. We are trying that to trick me, much. act me like I'm crazy. We yeah. agree that you do too much. Wait a minute, how, how are we trying to trick you? you really, because nobody to... don't talk like this. <laughs> okay, well, why are we doing the bit? Why are we doing it? You the one said you wanted to expand black people vocabulary and do word of the week, so then you get mad when we do it, and then you the one doing the sentences wrong. Why, why are we here? Why are we here? You don't even know what to say. Bye, Gary. <laughs> Come in. Bye, y'all. He ain't got the words <laughs> to say. <laughs> Right, one damn job. When you say you want to do, I, I want to do more. Well, I'm expanding our vocabulary. All I want to do is the tea. I can do other things. The Bible says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Then we give you something. Then you want to complain about it. This is what the bishops be talking about. All right, y'all. 13, 13, before the top of the hour. I am yeah, educated. Damn it. <laughs> nope. We can't tell. What did you say was Morning. coming up next? <laughs> <laughs> Everything but Gary. <laughs> More with the Star of the Morning Show coming up. I would eat to think that I was my enough. And I would eat to think that I was really enough. No, ma'am. But I would want it's my time playing to pick it up. When you play a game with what you all about. And I can't believe your heart is me. I can't you forget what I think for them. Oh, but no. you see in her, you I see in me. My girl is one, or that no, may be the Oh, no. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Hold it. He's half man, half woman. It's Gary. I want to hip you to the teeth. Mm-mm, it's Gary, baby. 
Gary has the tea and the color of the day. Gary. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, America. Good morning to you. It's Monday, a beautiful, beautiful day in the neighborhood. And here's what's happening in Celebrity News. But before we get to the NeNe story, y'all, Wendy Williams, people are still talking about the Wendy Williams documentary. Now, they're saying, y'all, that Wendy was scammed. Now, they're saying she was only paid, y'all, $100,000, y'all, for that Lifetime documentary. Now, they're saying that the drama is still surrounding the talk show queen lifetime documentary they say wendy who made an estimated listen to this she made 10 million dollars a year as a talk show host and was only paid one hundred thousand dollars an episode for that devastating lifetime documentary they said we showed her at her worst y'all now according to mto they're saying that people close to wendy believe that she was exploited y'all and tricked her into participating in the documentary now they took advantage of wendy's impacted mental capabilities and they said they tricked her into signing y'all the legal paperwork. Yeah. Now, it was confirmed that Wendy was promised y'all 100000 an episode or the disturbing Lifetime documentary slammed as exploitive by critics and fans, y'all. Now, they said in a recently filed court document, Wendy, 59, was paid that $100,000 per episode in the four-part documentary. Now, they're saying that the horror and TV show exploited Wendy, y'all, showing her in the confusing throes of dementia. Is $100,000 a lot? Because, I mean, I mean, to a broke person, no. I mean, it's not a lot? No. Really? No, not for women. Not, not for that. Yeah. And not for that. And she, it was only four episodes. Yeah. No. Yeah, they said the payment plan was set up um, out in an um, 18-page contract. Wendy allegedly, y'all, signed in back in 2023, shortly before she was diagnosed, y'all, with the primary progressive aphasia and the frontal temporal dementia, the same disease, y'all, that impacts action hero Bruce Willis, y'all. So, but it, it's a sad situation, and you know, and they're still I going on the body. She getting it, unless, she, unless she got some money set up on the back end. Yeah, I don't know. They didn't say, but that's a whole... I mean, and you know, they still look like now they're going after her son. They say her son, hell, was spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on Uber Eats. She, he said, but it was between him and his mama was ordering, you yeah, know, and, that and food. Wendy is not a cheap person. No, she we, not. We, we know that from when we seen her and we talked to her and been around her. Like, she... She, she did her son a birthday party, and the birthday party was like $100,000. But by the time you buy balloons and decorations, that's 50000 already. And then you got to get a caterer. You got to invite the people. Like, oh, uh, it, it, that could be what it turns out to be. Lord. Chuck and cheese. Oh, that what you think they should sure go now? Not for a grown person that's in college. Why not? <laughs> Chuck E. Oh. Cheese. Yeah, well, <laughs> well we're going to follow this. So hopefully Wendy is not broke because, you know, and her husband trying to get his check back. He said, honey, he needs to get his check. So we're going to see how this all yeah, turns out. he recently found something too, right? Yeah, yeah. He's, he said he wants his money. That's sad. Yeah, he said he needs his money because, you know, his um, his, Shirena, his girlfriend or wife now, she have their baby and they got to feed their child. And, honey, you know, she ain't working. I they both was, need to get a job. Yeah, well, his job was being Wendy's. Was. Yeah, well. We just gonna pray. That's all we can do. Like, where, where's she gonna get the money from to pay him? If they not he giving sees, it to her, yeah, he yeah. sees what she's going through. Yeah. Why would Why would you knock somebody while they down? Does he feel yeah. like they give it to him instead? Mm. Yeah, well, we're gonna see, y'all, we, and we're gonna keep Wendy lifted up in prayer. All right, moving on in other celebrity news, while keeping people lifted up in prayer, Nene Leaks, baby, this girl is speaking out now. The Real Housewives, an Atlanta alum, honey, she is blasting, y'all, her former co-star Portia Williams. Now, according to Nene, baby, Portia is pulling, y'all. She said she's doing some behind-the-scenes things, honey, so, so shenanigans. She said she's trying to stop Nene, y'all, from making her coins. And here's what Nene had to say about Portia just stopping her coins. I am shocked to hear that Portia would go to a production company and say that she doesn't want to work with me because we've had a lot of issues in the past. What lots of issues that we had in the past? Okay, when you call a black woman angry, difficult, we've got problems, I can't work with them on set, that is a death trap for a black woman in the industry. Yes, now the show is now they were gonna be working on the upshaws, y'all. Now um they called Nene and Portia to work on the upshaws. Well Nene went to get her, you know, size and her outfits and all uniform or whatever for the show. Now this show is with um Kim Fields, Mike Evans, Wanda Sykes, and some many other people. And they said once she got there, they asked Nene, Well, girl, do you have any problem with any housewives, anybody, any, you know, whoever, whatever? She said, No. They said, Well, huh, you got a problem with somebody because um evidently Portia called him and told him that she couldn't work with um Nene because, you know, Nene did not call her during her time of divorce. 
when she was going through something with Simon, she said Nene didn't call her, and she needed a call, honey. So she decided, allegedly, that she did not want to work with Nene because Nene did not give her a call during her time of, you know, going through. And um, and Nene said, you know, which was very interesting, Nene said, honey, she let the world know. She told us, honey, in the public, she said, honey, she was replaced. Now, they replaced Portia with Cynthia Bailey. So she's going to be on the Upshaw's um, show when we um, see it, when it come out or what have you. But um, the thing is that a lot of people are saying that um, – Nene has said, though, that was very interesting. She said, honey, that um, y'all got to realize, honey, that Portia is not a star. She said Portia is not a star. She said, honey, she is a Bravo liberty, period, unquote. I don't know about that. I don't know, Ricky, but that's what Nene said. She said, y'all thinking she'll start? She ain't no damn star. She's a Bravo liberty, which means we found who Portia was when we saw her on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. She, we did not know who she was until she got on that show. So that's what Nene said. So we're going to keep our parties dipped up in prayer and hopefully they get together. And hopefully, you know, that you know, because they, they dated together. I mean, Nene put it out there. Her and Portia used to date the Africans together. They used to go out on dates and everything. <laughs> oh, so my God. Stupid. Africans. Make it yeah, like well, that's what she said, you know. But did we know who Nene was I'm before so tired of she this. got on? Yeah, well, before Housewives? Did she? Did, what did she do before Housewives? Um, I don't know what she did, but we know what she said. Portia did. She was the pro right, right, but we didn't know. We didn't know her or or, or them. Well, we know none of them exactly before Housewives. Yeah, we knew Candy because she was an escape. Yeah, she was right. a real. She was an actual celebrity. Right. Yeah, well, yeah, we knew Kim Zosiak too. I did we? No, 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 no sir. No Cynthia and Candy, I think, was the only actual celebrity. Because Cynthia, Cynthia was, was a the supermodel, model, yeah. supermodel, right? Yeah, so we're gonna keep our parts lift up and proud, honey. Because we know who they are now, honey. And we're gonna see who they turn out to be. I think, soon. I think, uh, if, if whatever the case is, at least Portia didn't say her or me. She decided not to go in. If this is the, a true story, yeah, she decided not to go in, and Nene still was able to work and do the job because Portia could have been like, either it's gonna be her or me, exactly, and not do the job. So she, yeah. I guess, she just didn't show up. I don't know the whole story. Yeah, well, we glad everybody's working because everybody needs to work. Honey. Well, she, as, as long as she got the opportunity uh, to do yeah. the job, I'm sure her and uh, Cynthia Bailey killed it. Yeah. yeah, exactly, yeah. and and we love them all, honey. They're and all friends. Hopefully, it all sure. work out. Exactly, it's gonna all come out in the wash. All right, but the sometimes Kalona, hey, like that, sometimes you just want to back, just back out. Be like, no, nah, this is not my comfort zone. I'm just gonna back out. Uh, you go ahead, take the gig, enjoy. I'll do something else. You know. <coughs> yep, and there you have it. All right, <clears throat> the Kalua today is one of my favorite Kalua. My Kalua today, y'all, it's Marlin. On the high end, you say Marlin, and on the low end, you say beautiful navy blue. Marlin. That's your Kalua oh, yeah. today. That's mm-hmm. beautiful. Y'all Marlin give it up for Gary with the T. Yeah. yeah. All right, y'all, we're trying to motor show. I got the wake up call. Get at me. 866. Ricky, here we go. Here we go. from Aiken, South Carolina. I'm just calling to say, wake up, wake up, wake up. Good morning. This is Lamika calling from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I want to tell Brenda Faye to wake up, wake up, wake up. Everybody at the East Baton Rouge Council on Aging and Baton Rouge General Blue Bunny. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Good morning. This is Jasmine from Hartwell, Georgia. I just want to wake up my healing family. And my husband, Malcolm, wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up, wake up. If you listening on your radio, radio, oh. yo. Oh. 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 Let them know, let them know this in city. Wake up, wake up. Columbus, wake up. Cincinnati, wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up. West Palm Beach, wake up. Please welcome P.J. Morton. Hey, and actually uh, calling in from Korea. Man, yeah. what are you doing our way in Korea, man? Man, what's going on, Ricky and, and the squad? <laughs> Good to be talking to you, man. Um, yes. Yeah, I'm in Korea. We just got to Korea today from, um, from Beijing, China. We had a show in China last night. And uh, we started this tour off in Manila, Philippines. So yes. I'm doing an Asian, New Zealand, and uh, Australian tour right now. So, man, I'm blessed. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. <laughs> man, congratulations on your new single, Please Be Good, uh, which is set to be on your upcoming album. Now, how is this project right here different from all the other projects? 
Yeah, well, well, this is different because I went to Africa for the first time, and uh, we spent 30 days over in Africa. I created a project purely in those 30 days. I didn't write anything before we left, and I, I didn't write anything after I left Africa. We went, and we went to four countries, South Africa, Nigeria, Ghana, and Egypt. Nice. And um, I was just inspired, man, by, by, by the continent, by seeing my people, and um, so it's got a different flavor. Yeah, we, we love hearing all of those experiences in your music, too. Good morning, PJ. This is Maria Moore. Um, you know, hey, I love Maria, following you. you hey, I'm doing good. Yeah. I love following yeah. you on social media and just seeing all the great things you got going on. You know, we're getting ready for a trip to Disney, and we heard you were the first black composer to write an original song for a Disney attraction. That's big time. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Yeah. Can you talk about yeah. that? It's a it's a dream come true, and it's actually the first black attraction at Disney. Yep. Period. And then I was able to write the theme song. Um, it's a New Orleans theme to the ride. You know, I'm a New Orleans boy, and um, and I got that call from Disney, which is a dream come true because I've always wanted to write songs for Disney. Well, I, I thought I was going to write for a movie. I never thought I would write for an attraction that'll be here 30 years. You know, yes. plus. Uh, but it's really exciting. So, yeah, yeah, I'm honored. That's Tiana's Bayou Adventure. So, yeah, we're looking forward yeah. to that. Yep. That's nice, right. Yeah, we, nice. we, we got to all make make a trip down there this summer. Uh, you know, I want it to be the blackest Disney World uh, they've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. Well, PJ, a lot of people might not know that you are the keyboardist for pop band Maroon 5, which is so dope. Now, what's the backstory? Yeah. How did you first get started doing that? Yeah, I've been in a band. Well, this July, it'll be 14 years. Wow. Um, I, I uh, yeah, I, I've been I've been with the guys for a long time. Um, it really started out. Uh, they were looking for a keyboard player that could sing, and um, I was actually on a solo tour of mine. And I was like, I canceled the last three dates of my tour, and I went to audition for them in L.A. They've been a band since eighth grade, so really. It was awkward for both of us, but um, wow. I auditioned. I was the first one to audition, and I, I felt the connection to them. Um, but it's been a crazy ride. I mean, we, you know, from 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 number one singles, I played the Super Bowl, I played the Oscars. It's been it's been amazing to be with those guys. But yeah, fourteen years. It's been a, it's been a minute now. Yeah. So I know you still the truth on that Hammond organ. I, I know you can still Not do like a you, good. Ricky. Please, I know you still got a good what a friend we have in Jesus in you. I know you do. <laughs> oh, man, yes, indeed. That's the first song my dad made me learn, too. Uh, but, no, it's, it, that'll never leave me, man. That's just that's just a part of who I am. Uh, so I can always get there and get down on them pedals, you know. And, yes, and sir. That yes, sure. sir. <laughs> Go ahead. So, PJ, so what can we expect to see in the future of PJ Martin? Um, what's up, Gary? Yeah, well, doing? I this album uh, we're going to put out soon, this album at, at, that we did in Africa is going to be called Cape Town to Cairo. We went from Cape Town, South Africa, all the way to the top of Africa and Egypt at Cairo, Egypt. Um, so that's coming. And I also have a memoir coming out uh, in November. Congratulations uh, on that. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's, yeah, it's called Saturday Night, Sunday Morning. And it's really talking about what you're talking about, uh, Ricky, just now. You know, my, my start in the church, how I'm able to exist in all of these different places, you know, gospel music, uh, but also, you know, my R&B music and then being pop music with, with Maroon 5. Um, it's all who I am, you know, and how I exist. Um, I, I thought it was a good time to tell my story. Uh, so that'll be out November, November 12th. And and let everybody know how they can uh, connect with you in the tour and let everybody know your social media. Yes. Well, I'm at PJ Morton on everything um, and the website tickets for whatever and see the tour at uh, PJMortonMusic.com. There yeah. it is, man. Hey, love you. And we always sure. playing uh, How Deep Is Your Love with you and Yelba. I play that so much. I, I'm sure you get phone calls. That's my that's my go-to. I absolutely love you, man. And tell your dad, man. Uh, I said hello. I love We all love Bishop Paul Morton. And thank you for joining love, us today, man. Uh, Y'all give it up yes, and show sir. your love for the one and only P.J. Morton. Yes, hey. Hey. yes sir. Let's go. Black Tony, what up? I'm trying to I'm trying to get down now. I'm trying to get down now. I'm trying to help uh I'm, I'm trying to help my uncle right now though. He... Nah, bro. 
Everybody nah, he, sick. Nah, he not sick. He's choking off us. It's uh, he's choking off his smoke. You know, it, it's the room, the room smoked up. Smoked up how? Cut, man. Cause you know I got my dog, man. My dog, he he sleeping in the room, you know, cause cause he can't go outside. Cause he had got into it with his other. He, so you know my where, dog. Where y'all, where y'all sleeping at? We sleep on a pallet in, in, in my grandma, at my grandma's house. We got like six comfort on. Man, on the what floor. you doing with your money, man? With my money. I have invested. I'm investing my money. But you invest in I'm trying to save, but I'm trying to save, but to buy me some real estate, sir. So I'm, I'm getting small. I'm getting small with my money. I'm trying, I'm trying to buy me an old house and flip it. I just got to save up a few more dollars. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. What, what, yeah. What's really going on right now? My uncle choking because um, because the room smoked up. Because you know my, you know my pit bull, my pit bull was meet with a great now was meet with a German shepherd was meet with a poodle. Oh, yeah. He got he got puppy kids with um with their dog down the street. And the other, and she got dog. She got puppy with another dog, and him and my dog be getting into it. Her two, her two puppy baby daddies, they be getting yeah. into it. Cause yeah. she still, cause she still be with both of them. So, oh, it's a long story. But anyway, so, um, so my dog had came in the house this morning, and um, he had been out there and I got into it with him again. And I got into it with the other dog again. And um, anyway, so I had came over. Uh, I tried to help him. Get himself together, and anyway, he had been eating something out there in the street, and he pulled it real bad. So he pulled it in the house real bad, and I struck a match. The uh, I struck some matches to get the smell out, cause my uncle was sleeping in there with us. He was sleeping on the other side of the living room, and the dog had pulled it, and it stank real bad. So I had scrubbed yeah. the matches, and then the, the the smoke from the matches made my uncle start uh start choking and coughing, cause you know, um, yeah. So what I got to do with you not coming to work? Yeah, man. Because I think my uncle just died. He stopped coughing a few minutes ago. Hold on. Let me check on him. Hold on. <laughs> you, you don't sound hold on. worried. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> oh. Oh. He did. Shut up. I'll call y'all back. <laughs> I ain't y'all back. He did. I'm, so, I'm sorry. My condolences. Say, man. My grandson, four years old, walked up to me and said, Granddad, what's an erection? I said, go ask your grandmother. <laughs> That's why I said, y'all got to be careful about these sisters. He came back smiling. I said, well, what did she say? Uh, she told me that uh, uh, she would tell me later, but for me to tell you, she hadn't seen one of them things around the house in years. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> Gary, who was that? Legendary, the legendary Dick Gregory. Hold it. He's half man, half woman. It's Gary. I want to hip you to the teeth. It's Gary, baby. All right, uh, five after the hour. Gary has the tea and the color of the day. Get right. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, America. Good morning to you. It's Monday, a beautiful, beautiful day in the neighborhood. And here's what's happening in the celebrity news, y'all. Everybody's talking about this, y'all. Remember, two years ago, retired NBA player Lamar Odom, y'all, he was linked, y'all, to Australian trans actress Miss Daniel Alexis. Well, they say now that Lamar and his ex-mother-in-law, honey, Miss Kayla Jenner, are teaming up for a new sports podcast. According to TMZ, they're saying Kayla Jenner and Lamar Odom are reunited for a new project, a sports podcast that pays over homage, honey, to their keeping up with the Kardashians' connection. Now, they're saying that the former in-laws, honey, Kayla, was Lamar's stepfather-in-law when the ex-NBA star was married to Khloe Kardashian. They're launching, honey, keeping up with sports, y'all, a podcast meant, honey, to take a fresh look at what it really takes to be the best. Now, this venture, y'all, it sounds like a good um, fit for the pair, but they're saying that Kayla famously won, honey, an Olympic gold medal, y'all, back in 1976, and Lamar won two NBA champion rings with the Los Angeles Lakers. Now, Caitlin and Lamar, y'all, along with co-host Zach Hirsch, y'all, will drop their first episode in the next few weeks, y'all, with boxing legend Sugar Ray Leonard as their kickoff guest. Isn't that nice? Yeah, nobody want to hear that. Huh? Somebody want to listen to Caitlin Jenner. <laughs> Rock T, you sports, what you think? I mean, hey, somebody, I promise you, somebody going to want to listen to this and, and watch this podcast. Oh, yeah, I okay. mean... Lamar with his ex-mother-in-law, too, honey. I mean, that's a good thing. So, honey, congratulations to Lamar, honey, and um, and, and um, Caitlyn. Well, Caitlyn ain't never won no Olympic medal. Yes, she did. Yeah. Bruce did. Yeah, Bruce is two different people. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they won Bruce. nothing. Yeah, Bruce, oh, Bruce was a beast, dog, on that decathlon. <laughs> yeah, I'm wrong for that, honey. But anyway, congratulations, Lamar. <laughs> <laughs> we glad Lammy is going to do something, honey. Lammy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on in other celebrity news, y'all. The Proud Warriors are still being solicited, y'all, for Bruno Mars. I don't know if y'all heard about it, but they say Bruno Mars, honey. They say, you know, he um, last month, you know, he opened a nightclub in Las Vegas called The Pinky Ring in partnership with the MGM's um, Bellagio Hotel and Casino. Now they're saying insiders are claiming, y'all, that Bruno is swimming, honey, in a gambling debt, honey. They say he is swimming in debt, honey. They say Bruno enjoyed, honey, his MGM partnership a bit too much. Now, the singer who once supported himself as a professional poker player, y'all, has been known to rack up large debts, honey, at the tables. But a well-placed um, Las Vegas insider said he owes millions to the MGM, honey, for gambling. They say his debt has um, gotten him as high as only $50 million. Mm, mm, mm. Could y'all imagine spending, losing that much money, y'all? They say he makes only ninety million dollars a year off the deal he did with the casino. But then they say um, he has to pay back y'all his debt after taxes. They say um, Mars makes one point five million dollars a night. Now ninety um, million y'all after taxes is closer to sixty million for those who were wondering. So you great. said he makes one point five million a night after taxes. Mm-hmm. Oh. You know, that's so, a lot of money. Yeah, that's a lot of money. But when you gambling like that, I mean, I can't lose a dollar, honey. I would be so mad if I lost a dollar paying uh, at gambling like that. But you know, I mean, these celebrities they have lots of money, honey, and they could just gamble and do what they want to do. So, congratulations to him. Hopefully, he paid, honey. And the mafia don't come looking for him. Cause don't the mafia look for you when you gamble and you don't have no money? Well, doesn't he partially own the club? So I don't think he should have an issue if he's a part on- owner. Hmm. I don't know, Rick. Do you gamble? Hell no, I'm too scared and too cheap. You and me both. Mm-mm, I can't. <laughs> too no, cheap. sir. No, I ma'am. went over there to the uh, Russian roulette wheel, and once I got me three or four hundred dollars, I, I I got nervous and started walking out. And then I was walking out of there like I stole something. I felt okay. like I did something wrong. <laughs> yeah. that, let, that, let, that let you know right there, you don't belong in no casino. Right. You get four hundred dollars, right. start walking out of there fast, looking around over my shoulder, <laughs> jumping on the elevator like somebody gonna take it. You remember when uh, Morgan Freeman had that money at the end of Shawshank Redemption, <laughs> where, where yeah. Andy the Frame left in that money? I was acting like that. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations tomorrow. I'm um, Bruno. I hope it ever well. And my quick for free story, y'all. I don't know if y'all heard the shocking story, but we talked about it a couple of weeks ago that Jennifer Lopez was going out on tour and she had to cancel a lot of her tours because people weren't buying, you know, tickets to go to see Miss Jennifer Lopez. But now it's been reported that Jennifer and um, Ben may file a multi million dollar lawsuit, honey, against BMW because they were on a, a um, date the other night and they had a flat tire, honey, on Ben's 750 BMW. Mm. And that what? messed up their date night. It messed up their date night. I didn't know BMW's gone flat. But, honey, they had a flat yeah, night. And go flat. It's better somebody stick it. Yeah, but I don't Probably know. They had somebody I... jealous and saw him out there and then uh, went out there and, and, and stuck a hole in the tire. Yeah, well, legend, they said they might file a multi-million dollar lawsuit because you don't mess up their date nights. But I thought those cars had running wheels. Isn't this called a running wheel? It's called run, run flats. Oh, run flats. Yeah. yeah, you got run flats. Oh, you got to spend flat. a little extra money to get the run flats I just on got it. those. Really? Yeah. Well, he got the money. That's J-Lo and Ben. They, they should have had that. They, they, those are them. Expensive, that don't uh-huh. Yeah, expensive car, are they expensive? They are more. They, they cost a little bit more than the regular tires, but, I mean, on a high-end car... That should be oh, standard. Hell no. You're like four hundred dollars a piece. You don't need no yeah. spare. Oh no! Yeah. I wish the oh, hell I would. We're we gonna keep a good year tie with you. Blow them up, Gary. Oh, thank you, honey, honey. My run flat hey. will just be on flat. <laughs> my car so tall. My car so old. My tie still got an inner tube. In it. <laughs> oh, okay. All That's right. The old, Lord today, honey. It's one of my favorite. My color today, y'all, is Marlin. On the high end, you say Marlin, and on the lunge, you say beautiful navy blue. That's your color for the day, honey. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, y'all, y'all know them. Baby, remember those yeah, blow-up, those y'all. tubes, honey? Yeah. Y'all don't know. You don't know. Oh, Lord, my, my computer went blank. Uh, Maria, oh. what we got coming up next? Man, coming up next, we have something absolutely amazing on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. <laughs> she don't know either. Don't know. She don't know either. She don't know. <laughs> Mine went blank too, sir. <laughs> Smiley Morning Show. Turn it up. Did you see that post? People are talking. Here's what's trending on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. All right, y'all, Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Usher was named Entertainer of the Year at the 55th Annual NAACP Image Award on Saturday night, hosted by Queen Latifah. He accepted his award and spoke about being thankful for the ups and downs of his journey that uh, has lasted three decades. I want to thank... Each and every person that bought a ticket. I want to thank each and every person that decided to believe in themselves and believe in me. 
Uh, you know, this has been an amazing career, 30 years of passion that led me to Las Vegas to be able to celebrate, celebrate the entire legacy. That's 100 shows sold out, and then a residency in Paris, and then to play the Super Bowl, get married, and also to release an album. I don't know how many people do that much stuff on, in one setting. But I'm um, really happy to be able to uh, recognize you. This is for you, you, my number one. Yeah. That was cute. That was cute. Congratulations to Usher. And, of course, my favorite moment was when The Color Purple was awarded uh, Best Motion Picture. The musical film uh, features a star-studded cast, including Fantasia Perino, Taraji P. Henson, uh, Coleman Domingo, her, Danielle Brooks, Corey Hawkins, and and, uh, Halle Bailey, and... uh, Sierra and a bunch of people. Fantasia, who starred as Seeley in the film, had such a sweet moment when she won for Best Actress in Motion Picture. Y'all, check it out. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I don't, um, I don't even have a, a speech because I didn't think I was going to win. Um, ooh. <laughs> I was afraid to play Seeley, but I'm glad I did. Because I kept saying, if I don't win an award, the awards that I will win is the people who will watch Color Purple and the women who will relate to her and will feel like Oscars when they walk out. So I didn't think I was going to win it. (laughs) But I want to say thank you to my grandmother, who's in heaven right now, and my mother, who was the first queen that I saw and showed me that any room that I walked in, I didn't have to compete with no one. This does not make me, but I thank you for it. But everything that I went through, I want to say to God be the glory. To God be the glory. Yes. (laughs) To God. Come on, girl. One thing Fantasia going to do, she going to take you to church. Come on now. Love that sister. You know what? Another big moment was when New Edition was inducted into the NAACP Image Awards Hall of Fame. Yes. They were honored as pioneers in their respective fields and talked about influences that shaped their profession. This is such an honor. So many people poured into us over the 40 plus years that we've been in this music industry. God, our parents who gave us the gifts and the talents that we turned into our purpose. A gentleman that gave us our name, new addition, Mr. Brooke Payne. Those any for lifers out there, come on, make some noise, y'all. Absolutely iconic. No other male R&B group, pop group has lasted as long as New Edition. Yes. Man, so inspiring. Legendary. Oh my gosh. Other big winners were Damson Idris, who won Best Actor in a Drama Television Series for his role in Snowfall. That's a good series. Yes. Henson and Domingo took home Best Supporting Roles in the Color Purple. Ooh. Domingo also won Best Actor in a Motion Picture for his role in Rustin. Killed that. Mm. But you know what, now, y'all know the part that I really like, honey, with the fashion. Of course. I know they listen to the Ricky Smiley Morning Show because all the stars were dressed last night. And I was glad to see, you know, a lot of them looking decent for a change. They didn't like they just rolled out the bed <laughs> and went to the dog on the war show. So some of my best dressed people were like Usher. Now, Usher, I love that suit he had on. It was a Laquan Smith. It was about Laquan Smith. Real nice How suit. How you be knowing all that? Because, Ricky, because when you're a fashion guru, honey, you know these things. You look right now. Yes, that's right. And Michael Bivens, now from New Edition, Michael Bivens, I'm so glad he stepped away from the other ones. All of them in that black and gray. We can't wear black and gray all the time. Give me some color. And he had on a nice salmon-colored um, jacket, mm-hmm. which set him aside. He looked real good in that jacket. And, mm-hmm. you know, people were raving him and stuff like that, and I liked it. And um, um, Miss um, Taraji P. Henson, she looked good. She was wearing Dell Cor. Mm-hmm. I liked the way her outfit fitted her and stuff. Nice yellow outfit, nice for the spring, honey. And um, Miss, um, now she, her dress was cute or rich, honey. Miss Quentin Bronson. Quinta. Quinta Bronson. She yeah. was wearing Naeem Khan. Okay. She looked nice. You know, she looked good in her little ensemble. And Queen Latifah looked good. She was wearing a nice outfit, too. I was she like, had a few little cute ones. Yeah, she did a couple of changes, honey. Yeah. She and little Miss um, Kiki Palm. Yes, now, Kiki I love Palm, Kiki Palmer's little She outfit. was wearing Dolce and Gabbana. Yes, honey. So she was doing a <laughs> D&G look. So cute. they looked good, honey. So, I mean, all the stars looked good, and I was glad to see them all looking nice for a change and not coming up with, you know, 
like I said, like they rolled out the bed. I mean, this is an award show. Just because it's a, a black show, that don't mean you don't have to dress, you know, nice like everybody else does when you run into the Oscars and to the Grammys and beating down the designers to make your outfit. Right. And Oprah was wearing a nice purple um, Prada suit, so her dress was by Prada. She, and she introduced good. Usher, right? Yeah, she okay. introduced Usher. And now she's went nice time for her to stop the purple. Now we got that now. We know purple. Well, I mean. and she was representing color. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but we, we don't need no more purple in the Oprah. We haven't seen enough of the purple. But everybody looked amazing. So kudos out to them, honey. I mean, they were really giving it, honey. So You better leave Oprah alone. Oh, we love Oprah. Yeah, we love her. <laughs> and, and so, 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 Gary, outside of the outfits, uh, what, what, what made you really proud as far as the awards? Just the award show itself because, honey, it was well produced, honey. I, I, you I just, always felt like like they would have lack on when it comes to the NAACP Image Award as opposed to the Oscars, but it, you feel like everybody stepped up and made yes. it, uh, made it just as grand as the Oscars. Is that what you're saying? Exactly, they did, and I'm proud of them too. So I can't wait to see the other um, um, black awards to come up too. But one more thing too, y'all about the dresses. So a lot of the women was wearing sheer. A lot of the dresses was sheer. Really? A lot of see through, yeah. We saw a lot of see through. Let me see who I put. Um, that's the thing now, Gary. Yeah. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Vivica Fox had on a nice sheer, honey. Um, Cheryl Lee Ralph had on. She had uh, Vivica had a jumpsuit on, a nice little um sheer jumpsuit, and um it, and um Cheryl Lee Ralph and a lot of the women. But it was classy. Mm-hmm. That's the good thing about it because they had the pasties in the right places. Mm-hmm. You couldn't see what you thought you was gonna see. Right. So they did real good with that. So I, I was just really pleased, and then. Happy to see that we finally, you know, doing it the right way instead of like we wait for the Grammys and the Oscars to do it. Do it for the NAACP, do it for Soul Train, right. do it for Damn BET, right. honey, do it for um, Urban One, do it for all, the, you know, Come the black Come on, awards, man, honey. absolutely. Absolutely. You know? That's good stuff, man. And thank everybody. Uh, uh, y'all hit us up and let us know what you think on Ricky Smiley Morning Show dot com. Uh, if you couldn't get through. You liar. I believe him, yo. I don't know why, but I do. All right, y'all, Ricky Smiley Morning Show, 15 before the top of the hour. Y'all, Special K got news, you're positive, and absolutely cannot use. Special K, good morning. Hey, good morning. So, here we go again. Here we go again. Here we go again. We done went from the Cheesecake Factory lady to now we got another one going viral. This young lady is going viral for putting out a list of things that she needs for maintenance. Now, this is, I'm assuming, from any guy that she's dating or that wants to date her. (laughs) She has an itemized list of things that that he's supposed to be expected to take care of to be in her company. Right. All right, so Rick Rock, listen to this. All right. Women's maintenance, wax, $60. Nails and toes, anywhere from $75 to $130. Hair, anywhere from $80 to $400. Facials, $60 to $150. Brows twelve to thirty dollars, and lashes eighty to one hundred and twenty dollars. And she put a note at the bottom that said that one hundred dollars that you're trying to send is not enough, sir. Yeah. So <laughs> that's a uh, that's about eight hundred and ninety dollars worth of stuff. So that's probably one of those items on that list is. And that's it, once a month or every other week. It, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Is this weekly? Is this monthly? Is it bi-weekly? What? Like monthly or bi-monthly? That's so bi-monthly. That's that's bi-weekly. bi-weekly? And she feels she feels okay. entitled to that. Yeah, yeah. Now she gotta definitely take care of them doggone toes, man, because she can't be walking around like like Rick saving no eagle talents. Okay, but ladies, I, I, ladies, I, 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 ladies, I, I, listen what, up. What what she do? Listen up. How about y'all do? How about y'all take care instead of telling the man what we have to do? Let us take care of the things that we want to take care of voluntarily. Instead of coming out the gate saying you got to take care of this, you got. First of all, if you ain't my woman, if if, if we ain't married, I don't have to do nothing. Absolutely. Yeah. But y'all missed. Did y'all watch um a Married to Medicine the reunion last night? No, you didn't. Okay, let me tell you about it. Phaedra had a Phaedra told Dr. Greg when they first were gonna meet to each meet each other and go out on a date. She told him what she required. She gave him four thousand dollars worth of stuff that she does. For herself. So, for herself. Mm-hmm. So, which means that if this woman told you all this stuff that she needs, she telling you what she could do for herself. If you can't do it, then don't step. So, what? Where does the uh, love come in? That's at? a good point. That's all I'm asking, Rock. Where the where the love come in? People be focused. They be having a price tag and talking about how much you gonna spend. But what about the love? Yeah, the love. Does how come. you feel matter? 
Yeah, yeah, the love gonna come after you. Make sure no, I'm taking care no, of you. No, I don't. Don't. I can I can love love you. you. No, yeah, no, see, no, that's damn, not no really damn how love. it really works. But where's the point of allowing <laughs> somebody is... to do what they want to do for you? They may do more than what you would require right. them to do. Well, but, that's a bonus then. Good. But if you do all that and you're still miserable in the relationship, then what? Yep. It was pointless. And then you coming in a uh, relationship talking about what somebody need to do and got to do, and you, you know what I'm saying? Uh-uh. Yeah, it rubs could, you, people the wrong way. Yeah, and you could yeah. ruin your chance. Somebody be completely turned off by that. You don't. You right. shouldn't come in saying what you need. If you say, if look, they you got to get you. Me, yeah. They they know what your status is for exactly. the most right. part. They should. Yeah. And and if they fall in love with you, they're going to give you more than what you're asking for. And they're going to figure it out. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right. Well, what about when y'all say a closed mouth don't get fed? Well, sometimes no, you need yeah, to shut yeah, your yeah, mouth. Yeah, but sometimes, sometimes just close your mouth. And yeah, get sometimes it's better, to, it's better to keep your mouth closed than to open it and remove all doubt. Hold on, hold on. I think we missed the gym there. Ricky, say that again. Sometimes just do what? Close your mouth. And it'll get fed. It'll get fed. Yeah. Uh, oh, really? Through an <laughs> message? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> what you talking about? You need to open them out. <laughs> that ain't what I'm talking about. Uh-uh, no. Uh, no. no. Oh, all right, y'all, today we got a special privilege of talking to an incredibly talented comedian, actor, and musician who you may uh, know him as the voice of Oscar, uh, uh, who has a, uh, has the voice of Oscar, or uh, uh, in the proud family of many roles on this show, in living color, y'all please welcome legendary, legendary, the one and only comedian Tommy Davidson. Tommy! <laughs> Pick it up. Hey, big bro, <laughs> what's up, man? Do that, Ricky, where you at? Hey, do, do, you, do you miss me? Did you miss me? Who can take the children? That's the moment. Never get old. All right, never get old. Never get old. We, we, go, we go hard around here. She said she's going to burn his clothes. She might as well say, I'm going to drive my car off the bridge. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you just well start singing, I'm gonna get a black eye tonight. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <sighs> Tommy, man, the whole bunch of the whole bunch of somebody slam me. Say, man. Let's get, let's get right into it, man. You you done the sketch comedy, the stand up, the voiceovers, the movies, music, television, all excelled in every lane, man. Which one of those excites you the most? Ah, uh, man, they's like my kids, man. They they have their own different traits. You know what I mean? But I would say stand up to me, stand up is the most freest because can't nobody tell you nothing. You know, all I need is one mic, and that's it. You know what I mean? But I, I've just been glad to be able to do all the things I do, you know, over all these years, man. You know, I remember way back in BET, <laughs> way back in BET, I'm talking about like 92 or something we met. I mean, it's that long ago. Right. Uh, I'm talking about way, way back. And I was, I was so honored to meet you because I, I remember my grandmother and I watching you on Robert Townsend. And you would go wow. on there. And come, oh, yeah, man. You were going there and blow it up, and I was like, oh, this dude, a uh, little younger. You had to be about 19 or... Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I, was, I, was, I, was about, I was about 21, 22, 21, yeah. 20. Something. I was like, look at that little, yeah, dude, that little dude, man. And uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I am amazed. And we always knew that you could sing. Uh, recently, uh, there was a rumor that you would be... Uh, doing a reboot of In Living Color. Uh, I got to ask you about that. Is there any truth? And has anyone ever given you a call about this kind of rebooting In Living Color? You know what? Uh, we've been talking about it. I'm sure if everybody can jit, but we all working so much. You know, we all are working so much and it's really up to Keenan. You know, Keenan's like Professor Xavier and X-Men. He put us all together. So once he makes the call, we all going to show up. You know that. Okay, so Tommy. Deserve it too. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, man. Uh, people but know your it. iconic character, Varnell Hill, from The Martin Show, right? Yes, sir. So we, we got to mm-hmm. ask, man, what inspired you to pursue a serious venture into music? And, and, and who was your musical influences on this? Uh, everybody, you know, I'm a smooth jazzers, uh, everybody from from the Jackson 5 to, to, to Slave to Ohio players. Music was my first love, you know what I mean? Yes, but sir. But I had to wait on it. 
I had to wait on it, boy. You know, uh, Eddie Murphy had party all the time, so I said I definitely ain't going behind that. And uh, <laughs> and and, right. and, uh, J- and Jamie burned it up, so I had to right. wait. I had to wait till the pot cooled. Okay, so finally I found my opening. I found my time, and I had to share this gift that I had. I used to stand on the table back when I was four years old. They give me a spoon and some tin foil on it, and I would get down. I've been singing that long, so now it's time to share share that gift with y'all. Hey, hey, Tommy, you remember this video? How can it be? Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's what we were saying about that. That's what we were saying about that song. How can it be that you made this? Uh, you know I me. Mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. When when when, uh, when, Ed, when when Eddie Murphy when Eddie Murphy was uh, girlfriend was having that affair and she was looking at the dude walk away from the house out of the window upstairs and she came back downstairs. Right. He said, "So, so are we getting a divorce or what?" You don't remember that said, video? Uh, yeah, I remember that. She said, "If you if you take off red leather, if you take off them red leather pants, you know." <laughs> <laughs> Tommy, um, I recently saw Good Morning to You. I recently saw some photos from you uh, hosting the American Black Film Festival. You look so good. Like you got the same oh, face you. from decades ago. What is your like your your self care regimen? Like what are you eating, exercising? What's your routine? <laughs> you know what? I give me a lot of sleep. I, I, I love getting me at, getting at some water. You know, some great great food. But most of all, just happiness, man. Just being happy, just yes. spreading happy. I can hardly get down. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll start feeling bad on the plane or something. I get off the plane and somebody be like, oh, man, hey, 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 Tommy. <laughs> That's my grandma. Hey. My grandma been watching hey. you for like 99 years and she's 98. You know? so, <laughs> I love it. Hey, you know Tommy. I mean? Tommy, I, I just want you to know, man, you got, you, got, you got two dudes in two different states. Don't even speak to me and rock T because of you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> you got, you got, you got La Le, Baller at the comedy club in Atlanta. You kept saying that he had that Larry Holmes haircut. <laughs> me, me and Rocky was sitting at a table, oh, man. and then, and then, and then, then the dude in Dallas, the yeah. dude in Dallas, yeah. we was doing karaoke. He had on a, uh, he had on a red stripy, a stripy shirt. He had a little Jerry curl. You kept calling the dude Ronald McDonald. <laughs> <laughs> he. He went, he went from being a fan to, to like looking like Beetlejuice in me, man. I was like, <laughs> wait a minute. I didn't even remember that. Hey, Tommy. Do um, you remember that, man? I mean, I, 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 took him from, I took him from zero to 100, man. I ain't lying. Oh, man. Listen, man. <laughs> All right, y'all, here's your new single man, Stronger, featuring Earth, Wind, and Fire. Give it up for Tommy Davidson. Yeah. All right, ask me how I feel. Ask me how I feel about my life. Ask me how I feel. You just made me stronger. So I could love life more. You just made me tougher. All right, 26 minutes after the hour, front page right here. Maria, good morning. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, RSMS family. Here's what's happening in news. All right, so former President Donald Trump's controversial statements about what will happen if he loses in November continues to have folks talking this morning. Here's what he had to say. Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole. That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. So Biden... Yeah, Biden responded on X saying it's clear this guy wants another January 6th, but the American people are going to give him another resounding electoral defeat this November. Meanwhile, Trump allies argue the former president's words were being taken out of context and that he was clearly talking about the auto industry being decimated if Biden wins re-election. He knew what he was saying and he knew who was <laughs> sure. listening. Yeah. He was psycho. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he getting that message out to Proud Boys. And yeah, and all those other uh, uh, swastika uh, groups that follow him. 
Yeah, I know this won't be the last time he'll say something controversial mm-hmm. on the campaign trail, so we'll continue to cover this. Uh, in other news, Ricky, six former Mississippi law enforcement officers who pleaded guilty to state and federal charges stemming from the torture and abuse last year of two black men, one of whom was shot in the mouth, are set to be sentenced in federal court this week. Hunter Elward, uh, Brent McAlpin, Christian Deadman, Daniel Opdyke, Jeffrey Middleton, as well as a former Richland Police uh, Department officer Joshua Hartfield, will be sentenced in Jackson before Southern District of Mississippi U.S. District Court Judge Tom Lee. And uh, you should see their mug shots. Uh, they are going to jail, and it's probably not going to be a pleasant experience for them. Yeah, they ain't, ain't a hell hot enough for oh people my who gosh. do something like that. Yeah, terrible. Yeah. All right, lastly, and in lighter news, there was no winner for Friday night's Mega Millions. Jackpot drawing with the grand prize ballooning to an estimated uh, $875 million for the next drawing, which is taking place tomorrow. The Powerball is up, too, y'all. 600 and something million. So we have choices. Give me 10% of that. I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Friday night's drawing had a cash value of $385.1 million, which will now increase after no winner was declared on Friday. So press your luck. Get yourself a ticket. Never know. If you want some money, you're feeling greedy. Come play Powerball with me. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how the song goes? Okay. Okay. Remix. <laughs> I'm Maria Moore, and those are a few of today's news stories. For updates and more headlines, go to rickysmileymorningshow.com. I can see what's going on in the that's all gone, man. Yeah. Where they came from. Come pull and look at the numbers on these. <laughs> <laughs> Man, let the madness begin. Or let it continue, man. <laughs> NCAA March Madness Selection Sunday went down last night. Let's Shut start. Up, Brett. Let's start with the men's <laughs> top four number one seeds. You got Houston, UConn, Purdue, and University of North Carolina. Uh, OU, Pittsburgh, Indiana State, and St. John's all got snubbed and uh they denied to play in the NIT. But uh, moving over to the women, South Carolina, Iowa, USC, and Texas, they all pulled the number one seeds. Uh, shout out to Harvard women's basketball team and my daughter Harmony and their team. And they fell a little bit short, lost to Columbia by two points in the Ivy Conference tournament. But there are two Ivy League teams that's going dancing, Princeton and Columbia. Shout out to the HBCUs that made the tournament, Jackson State and Norfolk State. It all goes down Thursday. Tip off. Let's get it popping. Uh, real quick, big news in the NFL dropped also, man. Aaron Donald, one of this uh, this generation's best defensive players of all time, retired. He says, I'm done after 10 seasons. All 10 seasons he played with the L.A. Rams, man. So Aaron Donald is going to move on to uh, do his things after his football career. Follow me on social media, man, at Rock T. Holler. Let's talk sports. Feeling lucky, I swear. <laughs> the numbers on these balls make you a millionaire. All right. <laughs> Drop it like it's hot. Talk Drop about the like ping pong ball. Bounce around the thing. Just to clear the case. Catch me at the high the BRA18. Hey, we talking about the basketballs in the NCAA tournament. Or he could be just talking about the lottery, which we just talked about. Oh, if y'all, y'all keep trying to clean it up, you're talking about the Powerball. Ladies, ball. if you need Powerball, Powerball, Powerball. Oh, my God. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, everybody. I'm your girl, Brad Tat Tat. And this is the hot spot where we bring you music, movies, and more. The ball is in my court. Uh, Kanye West's team claims that about $1.2 million worth of gap clothes was stolen from his collection at the warehouse. The clothes were allegedly advertised at a Los Angeles sale, causing West's team to issue a cease and desist letter to the organizers. Now about 60,000 art, damn, 60,000 articles of clothing vanished from the storage space. The Yeezy team found the sale through an advertisement from a fan account, which offered tons of Yeezy Gap clothes for $20 each. So the cops then went to the sale to investigate and were assured by the organizers that all the clothes for sale were bought legitimately. They also provided receipts to support the claim that the sale was legitimate. However, law enforcement said they could not trace every item to a receipt, uh, which means some could be missing. Unfortunately, neither West nor his team filed a police report. And because of the organizers' contradictory narratives, the police couldn't confiscate the clothes for further investigation. 
So after tracking down the sale, Kanye's team issued a cease and desist letter to the organizers. In it, they accused them of forging the receipts shown to the police to throw them off trail. Uh, the team never approved the bulk sale of the clothing, and there's no record of such a large sale in their record. So, oh, wow. man, it kind of seemed like they, they, they might be guilty and forged some receipts to just show the police to yeah. do exactly what they said. Because how are you going to have all that Kanye stuff and you selling it for $20? Right. Like, that's that's crazy. All right, y'all, moving on. Meek Mill took the X, formerly known as Twitter, and revealed that he has a lot to say and can only say it on a podcast platform. He wrote, I want a podcast deal. I have a lot to say on many different levels. If you have a podcast business moving slow, I can reverse that. I've always been on my own media, and I want to join the culture of black media. I want to partner with somebody already good in the business and not just dive in. That prompted DJ Academics, a longtime podcaster and rival, to make an offer to the Philadelphia rapper. He said, I'll offer you a million dollars up front for 52 episodes, one a week. We own video and audio with the option to renew for a second year. Also, we bust down ads 50% on any ads we bring in, prize packs, fashion over, etc. You can own the podcast, but we share the IP as long as you as long as you in the deal it's unclear to whether or not meek mill has taken him up on his offer what y'all think about that meek mill teaming up with academics yeah mm. go for it. i love it man mm, okay well that's a very detailed offer yeah people be making money on these podcasts don't they yeah. absolutely absolutely all right y'all well whatever happens with that we'll see and i'll keep you posted all right y'all we're gonna wrap up the hot spot on that note but coming up next we got the praise mix down with the white stone the time now is 27 minutes before the top of the hour it's the ricky smiley morning show